Hello, welcome to Electronics Education. I'm Vincent Chan. In this lecture, we are going to continue our lesson on the small signal model of MOSFET, but focusing on the internal capacitances and high frequency model. MOSFET small signal model, part three. Internal capacitances and the high fre frequency model. This is, this, this is also the foundation before you can do the frequency response analysis, the high frequency response analysis for the transistor amplifier. Very important foundational lecture. Let's start with the low frequency model. What do we mean by low frequency? So at low frequency, you don't have to consider the capacitances, internal one. Why? because it can be treated as an open circuit. So in a low frequency model, you see the three, right? Four terminal, gate source, drain, and a body. The three component, transconductance, output resistance, and then body transconductance. Transconductance, the orange, the black, the output resistance, and the purple one. And here's the formulation for the output resistance and the formulation for the relationship between the stronger transconductance and the, the weaker body transconductance. So now, let's move on to the address the mass internal capacitances. The first two, source to body. Source to body, and then Drain to body. Next, gate to source. And then gate to drain. Easy, right? Easy, right? Gate, drain. Source, body. So source to body, drain to body, gate to source, gate to drain. So let's end this lecture. And then what? Did you learn? We need to do more. So I'm going to teach you, because this is the semiconductor devices, right? Right? So I expect you to learn more. So then you understand the gate to source, gate to drain. These two capacitance is actually referring to, look at your left hand side. So your left hand side, you see the gate to source. You see the gate to source. And then gate to drain. A kind of symbolic using these two symbols to represent these two capacitances. And because this is, when you use the, the small signal model, this is very likely, most of the time, the device is in, is servers and amplifier. So, to become an amplifier, to serve as an amplifier, the device has to be in saturation region. Has to be in the saturation region. So in saturation region, you will see this. The source end, non-pinch off. And drain end, it's a pinch off point. It's pinch off. So it represents, these two capacitances represent the gate to channel capacitances. In other words, if you apply a gate, on the top, then the sum of the positive charge accumulate on the metal gate. And then the, the, you induce some of the negative charges on the other side. So this kind of charge storage gate to the channel. So capacitance reflect the ability to store the charge, to store the electrical energy. Okay, so it represents the gate to channel capacitances. So from the derivation, then we can prove, we can prove from the further derivation, which I'm not going to show you, but I expect you to be aware of this. Because uh, if you try to calculate, this is the oxide, C-ox, gate oxide capacitance. And this dimension is channel length. 
But there's the dimension perpendicular to your screen. It's the channel width. So from the top, then you see width, length times width. Okay? So there's the area. And C ox is the gate oxide capacitance per unit area. So you got to times multiply by the gate area that becomes you see this capacitances, right? Capacitance in the gate area. And you kind of you can divide. But which one is more has more? On the left on, on, on your left, right? On the source side. On your left, on the source side. So it can be proved two thirds of this gate capacitance will be attributed, will contribute to the gate to source capacitance. Okay? But on the on your right, on the at the drain end end, at drain end, since it's a pinch off, it's pinch off. So no charge accumulated at the drain end. So ideally, it's zero. Why is zero? You can take note, because it's pinch off. It's pinch off, it has been pinch off. Okay, but something more. There's more. Because see, there's a LOV. See a LOV? OV means overlap. OV means overlap. The these two, the, the, the one two thirds, this represent gate to channel, channel. But outside the channel, in the pocket, there's an overlap. There's an overlap. Ideally, there's no overlap. Or if your manufacturing technology is perfect, ideally there's no overlap. But through the process, because during the integrated circuit fabrication, this is usually has been done by so-called ion implantation to form the two pocket. When you implant the ion, implant the ion, the crystal will, will get hurt, will get injured. So if emotionally we got injured, then, then we need healing, right? The crystal also, the semiconductor material through the process also need a healing. It's called anneal. So the annealing, maybe thermal anneal or laser anneal, the distribution will, will redistribute, okay? So kind of will, will broaden the, the ion, the dopant distribution. So it creating this type of overlap. In other words, it's not going to be perfectly aligned. Okay, it's not going to be perfectly aligned. There's overlap. So this kind of capacitance is called overlapping capacitance, called C O V. This is also the H, the fringe, the fringe, the H, also represent sort of a certain amount of the capacit capacitance effect. And then how to calculate this? Just use this. This is the oxide, gate oxide. I showed you this before, but, but I skipped the, the overlap part. Uh, I didn't draw out the, the overlap on the three-dimensional, but I did draw out in the two-dimensional, okay? So this is something that we, it's been taught before, right? Permittivity divided by the oxide thickness. So again, this is per unit area. This is per unit area. So we just time this. This is per unit area. And then when it comes to, because this is what I said, perpendicular to your screen, the W. So then how to calculate the overlapped capacitance is easy. So just the LOV times Take this direction, W, right? And times the per unit area capacitance. Contribute to the left-hand side, and the right-hand side is supposed to be equal, assuming it's symmetrical. So still a little bit overlapped will give to the CGD. 
So practically considering the imperfection of the manufacturing process, the CDP, CGD, sorry, C, probably I'm tired, I need a rest. Okay, after this, I'm, good, I'm done. So gate to drain, considering the manufacturing process, Seriously, I'm done today after this, but I will do my best to make sure you got this. No, no, no. I just want to show you this because it's okay. Got it. So now, gate channel plus the overlapping contribute to this CGS gate to source and the gate. To drain, gate source and gate to drain coming from the gate channel plus the overlapping. So first two is done. First part is done, and then let's move on to the SB source to body and drain to body. It's called depletion capacitors. It's called depletion. Capacitor. Look at the diagram on your left, left hand side. So always do the mapping, not just focus on the model, and then you have to do the mapping with the physical device. This is why you learn the semiconductor device. Source to body, and then drain to body. So source to body, then drain to body. So you need this too. Okay? Junction, reverse bias junction, then depletion capacitors. PN junction, M plus P, M plus P junction, M plus P junction. So two junction, two depletion capacitors. The first one is source to body. Why is the positive sign? Because it's the reverse bias. And VSB is a positive number, okay? Reverse bias, VSB is positive. And then VDB, drain to body. Drain to body. Source to body. When the transistor is under bias, VDS, VDB and the VSB are the same, it's very likely VS, the normalized term. The SB0, the, 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 the numerator is very likely is very likely is the same symmetry because there's no way the two will not equal but the bias shouldn't be equal right so which means which one is smaller take a note okay I didn't write on the slide I did okay take a note because VDB is larger right this is larger, so VCDB is supposed smaller. So source to body is larger, so it's not going to be sym symmetric. So CDB is supposed to be smaller. Okay, the one on your left, just put down, is larger, and this one, DB will be smaller. If you, then you have to learn this from maybe other course, or just self-study, two types of PN junction. Or just try to, you know, learn by yourself. The PN junction, there are two types of capacitances. Let me just give you a quick review. The first one is depletion capacitance. Capacitance, again, reflect a charge storage effect. Junction depletion capacitance. Depression region, the charge stored in the depression region. And there are two types of formulation you need to know. The first one is, is inversely proportional to the depression layer width. And then this is the first formulation. And the one I just show you comes from the second formulation from this. Okay, so if you plug in the, the, the depletion layer with the formulation into this, then you will get this. All right, so this is the foundation. So we simply take this and use it in the MOSFET. 
So now, here's the formulation for the second group. So remember the first group, gate channel, and the overlapping. But in reality, practically speaking, there's a fifth capacitance between gate and the body. Okay? Between gate and the body. So gate, physical structure, on the top. There's a metal, a polystyrcon. The one on the bottom is the back gate. So two metal gate. In between, there's a capacitive capacitance effect. Capacitance effect. Gate to body. So usually, let me show you the simplify. If this is sometimes too complicated when it comes to the circuit analysis. You will learn this from the other courses when the capacitance are considered, how they will affect the high frequency response of any amplifier. But let me show you the simplified high frequency model. Okay? So we're going to close the lecture after this. Because it's very likely the body will connect it to the source. This is especially true when it comes to the common source configuration. So when body connected to the source, then what? Then it becomes like this. See? If VSB equals zero, then CSB got short circuit. Got short circuit. Then four, five becomes four. Then what? Because the VSB, VBS is zero, that means the one current source can be open circuit. Which current source? The body transconductance related current source. So this one can be open circuit. So four capacitances, right? One, two, three, four. Look at your left hand side. And then these two parallel combination can be degenerated, combined into a single one. Right? You can either neglect the gate to body, or you can simply combine these two and uh, define a new gate to source capacitance like this. So four becomes three. So usually we will use this. Usually we'll use use this. Okay? If we use this, that means what? Means the gate drain to body has been neglected. For two reasons. Number one, it's small. Number two, which you will learn in the high frequency performance, high frequency response of the amplifier. For example, in common source amplifier, you will learn something called dominant pole. Which means a certain pole, a certain pole will dominate the frequency response of the amplifier. And there is no position for this kind of capacitance. Okay, it didn't play an important role when it comes to the high frequency performance. This is also the reason why people neglect this. But anyway, this is the simplified high frequency response I expect you to remember, okay? Gate to source and the gate to drain, which is the simplified high frequency model. All right? So here comes the takeaway. Four capacitances. Four capacitances. The first and the internal capacitances. The first group, gate to source, the first term. Sorry. I, I'm really tired. Gate to channel plus overlapping. The second term. 
And a sourced body, joint body, what's the physical meaning of this? Junction, depression, capacitors. In the next lecture video, which I'm not going to do it today, I'm going to teach you, give you one example, which is about the bandwidth, the unity gain bandwidth, kind of the high frequency analysis response as an application of what we learned today. So look forward to seeing you in the next one. Thanks for watching.